Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week we're going to continue with our Building Better Background series to include pressing molding paste through a stencil to create a highly textured patterned background. You can do this with um, stencils that you already have on hand or you can explore the stencils that I have recently designed for joggles.com and that link is going to be below. Um, you can create lots of fun highly textured patterns with molding paste uh, whether you tint it with paint Paint or leave it um, the color that it is and paint over the top of it. There's different ways to apply color to molding paste, um, but today we're going to look at how to press it through a stencil to create a textured, patterned background. Today I'm working with golden light molding paste, a chunky uh, circular stencil that I designed for joggles.com. And I've already prepared uh, my one inch deep cradled panel with gray gesso and a sketch of a bird. So the idea is now to put the molding paste as a textural background in the negative space behind the bird. That way the space where I'm collaging remains flat. Not that it's a bad thing to collage over the texture of the molding paste, but in this case, I'm going to put it around the outside edges. I'm going to push the molding paste through the stencil just with a piece of card board. Um, you can use a credit card. You could use a rubber scraper. You could use a, a lot of different things to do that. Um, so uh, today I'm just going to use a piece of card stock. I'm also going to have on hand a damp um, washcloth so that if I get the molding paste any place in here that I don't want it, I can wipe it off. You could also do this with a paper towel. Um, and I am working on this amazing craft uh, mat, silicone mat surface that I got from joggles.com. It's sold by the foot and so I've covered my entire work surface table with it, which is amazing because nothing sticks to it. So it's easy cleanup. Wipe up, wipes paint off, wipes varnish off, molding paste, whether it's wet or dry, it just wipes right off because it doesn't stick to this surface. So that means every time I come out here, I've got a nice clean table to work on. So, okay. So, um, this is uh, another one of my stencil designs and I am going to sort of focus on the smaller circles because this is a smaller format. So I'm sort of going to line this up out here and then I'm going to stay on the outside of my sketch. So I've got my, my light molding paste and I'm just going to sort of push it through the holes in the stencil and to create a textured background. Now you can add paint to this product before you spread it and then it would have a color. Um, it is not gonna dry clear. It's gonna dry sort of this white color um, and it can be painted afterward. So I might like to get um, a little, uh, have a little fun with painting it. So rather than adding the paint to it and making it one solid color, I'm gonna paint it after the fact. But you can experiment with either. You can add paint to it or you can paint after it or maybe a combo of both. This is light molding paste. So it's really whipped up light. It's not gonna make the piece heavy. Um, it weighs hardly anything and um, it's, it's gonna give us a nice texture. So I'm just gonna push it through the stencil and then in the spaces around the background of the bird. I'm not trying to keep it smooth because I want it to be textured. And when I'm done with this, I'm gonna wanna put my stencil right in the sink to get this molding paste off of it. So you're gonna wanna get it right, run it under water right away. So I'm coming, just globbing it through the negative spaces around my crow here. And I'm gonna check and see where his legs are. I don't wanna lose that part of my sketch. So now I'm going to lift up the stencil sort of on a corner and see if I got the molding paste everywhere I want it. It's a little heavy right there, so I'm going to scrape that down a bit. It's kind of a high peak. You may want to even out some of your high peaks at this point if it's too much texture. I'll lift it up and have a look at it again. I like that. I still think this is a little high right here. I'm gonna smooth that down a bit. 
smooth some of these down a bit, make it a little less dramatic. You can go with thick, thick, heavy texture, low texture. That's a personal preference. Now I'm going to put my stencil right in the sink so that I can clean it off. And I'm going to take off these edge pieces. So that doesn't dry with a big edge. So I've gone around all my edges and then I've got my damp towel that I can come in with and see if I've gotten it anywhere that I didn't want it. I think I did a pretty good job of keeping it off my sketch. Maybe a little bit on the top of his head there. I think that's not supposed to be there. There, I like that. And then I can take a pencil, if I can find one, and I can bring in some of my uh, feathery effects into that molding paste. Uh, I've got a beak that comes down here a little bit further down and I can scratch through, bring my feathers back, my feathery edge. There, now we've got a textured circular patterned background with the light molding paste. I've come back in and scratched through some of my lines into that, which makes it visually interesting. And then I'm going to paint and collage my bird and I'll come back into this background and maybe add color in fun random ways either in the circles or outside of the circles or across the whole thing I'm not sure but now I've got a, a thick texture which is super fun and it is a super fun way to use the molding paste and the stencil so there you have another way to use fun stencils designed by me from joggles.com